morning to everybody. Uh, we want to call to order uh, this hearing uh, on uh, several bills on uh, inst instructional gardens and urban agriculture and vertical farming. We acknowledge the following. Uh, we have here uh, from the Department of Agriculture, USEC for Policy and Planning, uh, USEC Rodolfo Vicera, okay. and the President of the Parents Teacher Association, Mr. Wilfredo Rodriguez, uh, the Chapter President, NCR Chapter, Philippine Association of Agriculturists, Mr. Irwin Belen, Irwin Belen, and uh, Assistant Director Glenn Panganiban of the DA, uh, the Deputy Director of the Agricultural Training Institute, Rosana Mula, and the, uh, from CHED, uh, Ms. Cynthia Hernandez, and from the uh, Cocopea, Attorney Therese Ray Ann Aquino. And we have here uh, Yusek Ariel Kayanan of the Department of Agriculture. Okay. This is a public hearing held by the Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform, for, each, for which I am the chairperson. We have the following bills as our agenda. Senate Bill 147 introduced by yours truly, entitled, An Act Mandating the Establishment of Instructional Gardens in all the elementary <coughs> and secondary school, both private and public, making it a requirement for the creation and issuance of permits for schools and for other purposes. And Senate Bill Number 257, introduced by Senator Pangilinan, entitled An Act Promoting the Use of Urban Agriculture and Vertical Farming in the Country's metropolit metropolit Metropolitan Areas to Address Food Security Concerns and Regenerate Ecosystem Functions, Appropriating Funds, Therefore, and for Other Purposes. Then Senate Bill Number 280, introduced by Senator Lapid, entitled An Act to Promote Urban Agriculture and Vertical Farming in the Country's metropolit Metropolitan Areas to Address Food Security and Concerns and Regenerate Ecosystem Functions and Appropriating Funds Thereof. And Senate Bill 587, introduced by uh, Senator Grace Po, an act promoting integrated urban farming to address food security concerns and livelihood opportunities and appropriating funds therefore. And the Senate Bill 1264, introduced by Senator Rebilia, entitled an act promoting integrated urban agricultural development in all metropolitan areas nationwide to address food security concerns and appropriating funds, therefore. The chairman, uh, as uh, the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food, I acknowledge the presence of our resource persons, but first of all, let me give a background of this proposed legislation. According to the World Health Organization, there has been a growing increase of overweight, obese children and adolescents aged 5 to 19 from 4% in 1975 to around 18% in 2016. In our country alone, this prevalence increased from 1.9 in 1990 to 3% in 2013 for children ages 1 to 4. For children ages 5 to 6, this has increased from 2.9% to 5.1%. For adolescents ages 10 to 14, this has increased from 3.6% 
to 7.1%. 7 and finally, for teenagers ages 15 to 19, this increased from 3.4% to 6.4%. On the flip side, malnutrition and hunger is a prevalent and persistent issue in the country. The Philippines has a prevalence rate of 19.8% of underweight and 30.3% of stunted children under the age of five years. The mentioned prevalence, whether underweight or stunted or overweight or obese, may lead to irreversible health impacts if not addressed. These altogether reflect that there is lack of regard for proper diet and nutrition for children and lack of government policies specifically providing for access to information on nutrition and making nutrient-rich food items available for all. With this mentioned, there is a need to provide programs for encouraging awareness in proper nutrition and at the same time address malnutrition. This is best done during childhood, hence the establishment of vegetable gardens in school can be an effective tool for hunger mitigation. I remember I visited a school in Oton, Iloilo, and they showed me that uh, they encouraged the building of gulayan sa paaralan sa kanilang paaralan. And ang mga bata nagtanim ng gulay, and then yung mga nanay, they come every day by turns to cook the gulay from their harvest and feed them to the children, the school children. Alam nyo, nawala ang malnutrition to sa school nila without any expense for, from government. <laughs> o, sila lang ang nagtanim, yung mga nanay ang nagluto, na solve nila ang malnutrition. Kaya ako po ay a great believer of gulayan sa paaralan. <coughs> In 2007, a program called Gulayan sa Paaralan began, began to encourage public schools to establish vegetable gardens, primarily to serve as a source to supplement feeding programs within the area and help alleviate malnutrition and hunger. Such program conveniently serves as an effective teaching tool for children to learn the art and science of planting as well as the benefits gained from it. My version of the bill seeks to replicate such program through the establishment of instructional gardens in elementary and secondary school, whether public or private, not only as a means to alleviate hunger, but to serve as a tool in teaching the fundamental concepts about nutrition and the cultural and historical aspect of our food supply, the rudiments of planting, as well as to encourage and inspire the youth to venture into agriculture. In fact, kami po sa aming ciudad, sa Las Piñas, every year we have a, what you call a food festival. And lahat po ng may, uh, what do you call this, garden, urban garden, uh, we have three categories, one in public schools, one in uh, uh, subdivisions, and one in the barangay. Nung una po, ginagawa nila ito para manalo sila kasi ang premyo is 50,000 per category. But they, later on, they realized that they really make money out of their urban gardens. Kasi yung mga kapitbahay nila, imbis na pumunta sa palengke, sa kanila na lang nabili kasi mas mura by 30%. At sila naman, andali, kasi kami po sa Las Piñas, we have uh, barangay-based uh, uh, waste recycling uh, program na nagpo-produce ng uh, organic fertilizer out of kitchen and garden waste. So sila, meron na silang fertilizer. At any time naman na humingi sila ng seeds sa akin, binibigyan ko sila ng seeds. So halos walang puhunan sa kanilang vegetable garden and they make money. 
and we use this also. We have a farm school in our city, and we use this also as a, a drug rehabilitation for our uh, drug addicts who are community-based. Hindi naman sila lahat pumapasok sa drug rehab center. Yung mga mild pa, uh, they ha we have a community-based drug rehabilitation program. And we use uh, agriculture in a farm school to help them kasi sabi nila it's a therapy for those who are suffering from early onset of drug addiction. The other bill subject of this hearing proposed by other senators seek the promotion of urban agriculture and vertical farming, aiming to address food security concern, livelihood opportunities, and regenerate ecosystems function. Alam nyo, uh, dadating ang araw, misa, mali, malimit, meron tayong, uh, what do you call this, nagkakaproblema yung ating probinsya, nagkakaroon ng, ng uh, typhoon, uh, nagkakaroon ng maraming, katulad ngayon, taal, volcano, eh di yung, sila yung source natin ng, uh, what do you call this, uh, vegetable from the provinces. E kung magka-problema sila at walang dumating sa Manila, kawawa naman tayo. So we should learn how to be self-sufficient also in vegetable and fruits in Metro Manila. We, we should not rely on the provinces. Kaya uh, maganda rin tong bill na to. We will coordinate these two bills that they will be uh, in one bill uh, in one law that we will pass in the Senate and in the House that will really uh, uh, encourage uh, agriculture in all public and private schools and at the same time ag agriculture in the cities of the Philippines so that uh, we can uh, help solve malnutrition and obesity and uh, and at the same time, uh, our concern for food security in our cities. Alam nyo, uh, <laughs> pag sinasabi ko sa kanilang kumain sila ng vegetable para mas healthy sila, nagagalit sila. Oh, galit na galit. Pag sinasabi kong bawasan yung rice, kasi kung hindi naman kayo exerting a lot of effort, yung rice nyo, nagiging sugar. At pag naging sugar yon diabetes yan. <laughs> and then if you don't have money to treat diabetes, well, you're in trouble. Kasi ang diabetes will cause yung malfunction ng major organs nyo, and it can lead to death at an early age. Imagine ako ngayon, marami lumalapit sa akin na nagpapagawa ng sulat, both sa aming hospitals at sa... PCSO kasi namimigay sila ng grant for, uh, ano. Alam nyo ba na binibilang ko, 80% na sa kanila is kid chronic kidney failure. <laughs> oh, ang dami-dami. Uh, hindi ko lang maintindihan kung yung pumupunta sa akin, puro chronic kidney failure. But nagugulat ako na ang babata, age 28, uh, 30 plus, uh, early 20s, Eh, may chronic kidney failure. Eh, alam ko yung chronic kidney failure will come after middle age kasi sa kakakain mo ng maraming sugar, it will develop. But ngayon ang babata. So there must be something with the nutrition of young people. Baka kain sila ng kain ng junk food. Oh, hindi sila nakain ng vegetable. Eh, samantalang ang vegetable, sasabihin nila sa akin, Eh, ba't ko daw pinakakain sila ng vegetable? Eh, mahalang vegetable. Mas mura daw ang rice. Eh, sabi ko sa kanila, hindi naman kayo kailangan bumili ng vegetable. Mag-backyard uh, farming kayo ng vegetable. Instead of raising those ornamental plants, eh, maganda rin yung vegetable sa garden. Ako po, ang garden ko, meron akong vegetable garden. Kaya libre na ang aking, uh, ano ba yung mga libre ko? Talong, okra, uh, kamatis, kamatis uh, yung ano yung yung ma, ma, ma anghang sili 
and ano, basta may five kinds of vegetable ako na nakatanim sa paso. And nag pinagaganda niya yung garden ko. And at the same time, eh, libre na ako sa vegetable. So, hindi naman tayo kailangan bumili ng vegetable. We develop our own vegetable garden. So, the aim of this law is to encourage that. And then, magturo din yung mga teacher natin na the children to observe proper nutrition. Kasi I think one of the reason why uh, bumagsak na yung capability, di ba, merong na tayo ay eh, sumali do sa international research na they discovered na tayo ay eh, second to the last na in terms of nalalaman, di ba? I think part of the reason for that is not only the quality of teachers, but also malnutrition, di ba? Lack of uh, uh, nutritional knowledge that they have to eat food that will develop their brains so that they will be better school children, di ba? Oh. So, this is one of the reasons why we are interested also in uh, uh, passing this bill into law. <coughs> so, with that, uh, I would like to, to hear your opinion on this matter from our resource person, okay? And, uh, 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 sino ba unang volunteer? Okay, we ask Yusek R.V. Visera from the Department of Agriculture. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Um, we were instructed by Secretary Dar to represent him and read, and I am here to read his statement and as well for some more details uh, under Secretary Kayanan later. Um, the Department of Agriculture is pleased to convey its strong support to the proposed legislations. <laughs> One, mandating the establishment of instructional gardens in elementary and secondary schools as stipulated in Senate Bill 147 that you authored, and two, promoting the use of urban agriculture and vertical farm farming to address food security concerns tackled in Senate Bills 257, 280, and 587, authored by Senators Francis Pangilinan, Lito Lapid, and Grace Po, respectively. The proposed and Bong Revilla. The proposed establishment of instructional gardens in elementary and secondary schools, both public and private, is a great opportunity to promote among children the importance of land cultivation and the cultural and historical aspects of farming while reaping the benefits of eating healthy food. This proposed measure is likewise in line with the thrust of the department to motivate younger Filipinos to take on the challenge to help feed the nation. And what better way to do this than to include agricultural practices in their primary and secondary education curriculum. Basic sk skills in agriculture should be taught at the earliest age of education for the youth to appreciate the better field uh, and field better and eventually engage in it. There is also a need to include agricultural subjects that give focus on farming as a business. This can then be the springboard for the higher education system to provide the platform for the youth to pursue professional careers in the agriculture sector. The departments of agriculture and education and education should work together to come up with modules on how to implement this program. Currently, the DA's Agricultural Training Institute has the AgriKids Illustrate, Formulate, and Demonstrate program, which provides an avenue for kids to understand that agriculture plays an important role in their daily lives. The program comprises of a series of one-day events 
in different private schools wherein ATI promotes the importance of agriculture among children you and mean, the uh, ATI, ATI, ATI does only for private schools, not public schools? No, ma'am. Yeah. Also for private. Also for private. Yeah. You must uh, <laughs> Sorry, be sure of that. Because it's like, mahal nyo ba lang private school? Correct. Okay. Sorry, I think I missed that word here. Yeah. Sorry. Wherein ATI promotes the importance of agriculture among children and the value of home food production among parents. The different proposals to institutionalize urban agriculture and vertical farming uh, are also consistent with our vision of a food secure Philippines with <coughs> prosperous farmers and fisher folk. We concur that comprehensive studies should be conducted to expand the knowledge and understanding on these types of food production. However, the DA can also make use of existing and related studies to expedite implementation of this policy. We also support the common provision that the said bills for local government participation as it is crucial to the success of this policy measure. We believe that the local chief executives play an important role in food security as we consider them the rowers in implementing our agricultural and fishery programs and projects. The department through ATI will partner will, with local governments and other related entities and agencies in promoting new trends and technologies in urban agriculture. These urban agriculture seminars will teach participants farming strategies that require minimal use of soil. On the sections for budget appropriation, we support the provisions in SB 257 and 280, which do not put specific percentages for urban agriculture and vertical farming funds. This gives a free hand to appropriate up funds as necessary in close coordination with local government units. SB 587, Section 6, provides for the creation of Urban Farming Council, UFC. While we pose no objection to this provision, it would be prudent to inquire on the powers and functions of this council, better understand its purpose and how the various stakeholders can later contribute to the objectives of the proposed law. <coughs> Lastly, we would like to suggest the creation of the Urban Agriculture and Vertical Farming Program, providing for a small project management office at the Bureau of Plant Industry, which will serve as the coordinating body for all projects and activities related to these initiatives. Thank you very much, Your Honor, for giving us the opportunity to provide our comments on this proposed bill. I would like to pass the mic to to make this comment, uh, we have a we have a, a farm school yes, in an urban setting, yes. and I haven't heard of this kids course and urban agriculture of ATI. We're offering courses there, but you are not offering this to us. So I want to see the program on this, and I hope we can. Uh, do this in our farm, so I would see if you are really teaching this, so these two courses. Uh -huh. And I wish to inform the Department of Agriculture that we will pass a law mandating LGUs to allocate a certain amount of their funds for agriculture, just like they allocate a certain amount of their farm fund for, uh, what do you call that? Uh, no, no, yung gender, God budget. They allocate 5% of their fund for God. So maybe we can ask them to allocate around 10% of their fund to agriculture because most of them, both the 
in the rural areas and in the urban areas should encourage agriculture for our food <coughs> security. So I don't think it's not much to ask them kasi meron silang tinatawag, di ba, dinevolve nyo yung kanilang agriculturist. Tapos wala namang ginagawa yung agriculturist kasi hindi nila binibigyan ng budget. Oo. Kasi yung aming agriculture, city agriculturist sa Las Piñas, tinanong ko, ano ba ginagawa mo? Sabi niya, eh, sila daw ang in charge ng pag, ano, pag inject sa mga aso. Oh. And then, ang tagal-tagal ko nang may farm school doon, I've never seen her. <laughs> Kahit anino niya. I never see her to sa aming Las Piñas Food Festival. Eh, siguro dahil hindi naman siya in-encourage na to do her job well. Di ba? So I guess if we allocate a certain amount of their budget for agriculture in all the LGUs in the Philippines, then they will have money to spend on activities by their municipal and city agriculturists and provincial agriculturists. Kasi ngayon, wala silang ginagawa. Oh. So, hindi maganda yun. Kaya, uh, failure din yung ating agriculture in the Philippines. So, we will pass a law on that. So, that would serve as the budget for uh, doing this urban agriculture. Kasi nakalagay sa mga bill nila, uh, we should appropriate funds. Alam nyo, ayoko na mag-appropriate funds sa national. Pag kayo pumunta dito, gusto nyo palagi i-appropriate ko funds nyo para sa overhead nyo. Eh, ang dami-dami nyo ng overhead eh. Wala nga kayong program eh. Oh. Hindi ba? Uh, 50% of all your money are in overhead, in uh, in PS, in uh, in overhead, and then research. Pero pag tinignan mo, ano ba yung program nyo to implement? Wala. Walang program. Nasanay kayo na puro overhead. Kaya pag kayo magsasuggest sa akin, never suggest na magkikreate ako ng office sa national government. <laughs> Ang isasuggest nyo sa akin, mag-create kayo ng program para sa mga tao. <laughs> Oo. Tigilan nyo na yung overhead nyo. Puro overhead kayo. Wala kayong program. Kaya tinan mo, ang sama-sama ng performance ng ating agriculture. Kasi nasanay yung mga empleyado nyo na puro overhead. O pag nag-allocate kayo ng funds, puro overhead. Puro ano, ang daming, uh, ang daming research, wala namang application. <laughs> Kaya wala namang nangyayari to make our farmers efficient and competitive and uh, to increase their income. Wala eh. Kasi wala namang application na research eh. Oh. Kaya nung sinasabi ko na nababaliw kayo sa research, nakalimutang sabihin ng media na hindi naman puro research. Dapat may application ng research. Bakit mo gagawin ng research if you're not going to apply it in our daily lives? Oh, kaya tayo nagre-research para i-apply natin yung advantage ng research to our daily lives. And that means creating a program to apply the research. Eh, wala namang application ng research. Kaya, bakit tayo magre-research kung hindi natin i-apply? Kaya tayo nagre-research to apply it. Not just for the sake of doing research. Hindi ganun. Oh. Lalo na sa agriculture. Kasi ang problema nyo, competitiveness. So, yung ating... Uh, agriculture, hindi competitive. Talo tayo ng Vietnam sa rice. Talo tayo ng, uh, ng uh, Thailand sa sugar. Talo tayo ng uh, India sa dairy. Talo tayo ng uh, Indonesia sa coconut at saka sa intercropping sa coconut. Wala nga tayong pinanalunan eh. Ang nan, sabi ni Secretary Dominguez, ang competitive lang daw sa Pilipinas yung ginagawa ng private sector. Like banana and pineapple. Yun, ang competitive sa Philippines. Kasi ang gumawa private sector. But anything na pinakialaman ng gobyerno, hindi naging competitive. There must be something wrong. And you should not be proud of it. Oh. Kaya... Ayusin nyo yung mga programa nyo and yung mga research nyo to make us competitive, di ba? Oh. 
So we, I wish to acknowledge uh, M. Marie Del Rosario of DepEd, okay? And then we now hear from Yusek Ariel Kayanan of DA. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, after hearing the preliminary introduction coming from the chair, uh, DA is exactly in concurrence, uh, in adherence, and actually in support with what the chair has just mentioned. And in fact, Madam Chair, uh, at the present time, coming from or taking off from your statement, increasing human population, and not properly utilizing our resources, particularly in the urban threat and food security of the country. Yeah. It does not mean that if there is no land in the urban, there are researches already, as mentioned by the Madam Chair, that might be used, can be used, in order for us not to stop the, 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 and address those kind of challenges. One of the solutions being identified, Madam Chair, to alleviate their effects is the implementation of the so-called urban agriculture that you already mentioned and actually authored. And from that urban agriculture is the cultivation and distribution for food for urban areas precisely because they are our main consumers. For those stand, they are actually the hungry mouths. And most of them does not have those soil to till. In the urban, that's why we have to use that technology mentioned a while ago. So, uh, Madam Chair, uh, this network requires, of course, government support that we fully agree should be in the form of program uh, in order to become integrated into urban localities development thereby, which was already addressed by the chair. But it should be a mandate, uh, what they call a mandatory given to the LGUs, of course. Uh, LGUs and the public schools and the, public, and the yes. private schools and the schools. Yes, so. Madam Chair. So, in fact, um, a good example was those demonstrated already by no other than the author. Like, for instance, uh, agricultural technologies such as composting, seed banking, and what they call uh, containerized and potted or vertical gardening will be promoted to the localities in order for them to have a sustainable production. Of course, persistence will actually uh, put us there, but sustainability will actually keep us there. That's why the law is very important that, that they make it sustainable. This will not only supplement their food intake, Madam Chair, but also help their, in their waste management, the other premiums or the benefit, They're using recyclable plastic material as their container. On the other hand, it would also generate not only addressing the malnutrition, obesity, and uh, what they call uh, stun, stunning, but more so it will generate income. Uh, it, uh, on the urban citizens, when they already produce crops in excess of what do they consume on it. In fact, it was mentioned a while ago by no other than the chair that uh, they will be reaping the benefit of not only available, not only uh, accessible, but with nutritional content that, has, that are pressed, that can be picked anytime as they need it. And in excess, they could be pre placed in the proper container or what they call uh, uh, storage to maintain the freshness also. So further, this can provide them more access to fresh vegetables, fruits uh, that are applicable. And as the Philippine urbanizes, improves local food self-reliance through the urban agriculture to be considered. It is a very crucial part of the Department of Agriculture's strategy to level up agriculture and improve both productivity and, of course, profitability, which is also part of the one na China champion ng ating chair. It, on, on the other part, Madam Chair, of course, uh, I may not be able to detail it all, but we are very much willing to submit the detail and work on with this. Uh, it is also very vital, part of the comment of the other agencies, such as ATI, that... Uh, we want to instill in the mindset of the youth as early as possible the importance of agriculture. So, uh, well, of course, uh, as we see, uh, the, the, population, uh, the, 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 the age of the agricultural workforce are aging. And in fact, some of them are not being encouraged, are not encouraging themselves to go on to agriculture-related uh, uh, discipline because precisely during their primary, secondary period, they know nothing about agriculture, specifically those that are in urban. Um, uh, schools and universities in elementary and high school levels should already be provided venues for increasing students' awareness on the field. Uh, in fact, Madam Chair, the values, not only the know-how, the learning, but the values. 
that uh, there were some what, what they call silly jokes that says agricultural commodity are thought to be negative like pag bumagsak po tayo itlog pag bumagsak tayo ng alabasa or ng amote so that, that is the only thing that they know but not the nutritional requirement or content and and when you will be expelled in college they say go home and planting plant kamote as if saying that um, agriculture, uh, what they call profession or agriculture vocation is not that honorable. So th that, that value is very important, Madam Chair. Learning from that chair herself, she keep on impressing that they will only stay in agriculture. I am referring to those uh, who preferred to, to, to take the course, only if it will be actually profitable. So. Agriculture in elementary, as early as elementary and high school, Madam Chair, should have that sense of agripreneurship. So that they themselves, when they grow up, I have no disrespect to the other disciplines, like medicines or uh, what they call uh, lawyers, but their mindset is, I will become a doctor because I will be earning. I will become a lawyer because that is a actual uh, greener pasture to do with. But if it will be instilled, the agripreneurship, uh, mentality to el elementary and high school, that will be a good roadmap for them to tackle. So the Department of Agric Agriculture more than ever will be working with the Department of Education, of course. We'll have, we have to work together. This is actually a comment coming from API that a specific agricultural subject or activities to be embedded in the elementary and high school curriculum. Uh, for it is it should be an offering of a degree course and of course what will institutionalize it is the commission on higher education it should become a mandate the the, the most uh, no no brainer the simplest example will be we are not americans but all of us speak english because it is a medium of instruction it is mandated as a curriculum so that agriculture given that it will be mandated it will mainstream to the blood and the, it, the, the higher the probability that they will be engaged there. So, Madam Chair, um, we, we, the, the, the other agencies of the have a lot of inputs. We will be very happy to consolidate them. Then after consolidating, we will be submitting it to you. But uh, as, as what you say, Arvis says, it is the instruction of the Secretary upon seeing the, what they call, different Senate bills to support because they will be for the betterment of the farmers and the nation as well. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Actually, uh, sinasabi ng finance, Department of Finance, dapat ang growth ng agriculture should equal the growth of the population. Oh. But unfortunately, palagi tayong below the population growth, ang ating growth ng agriculture, because you always say the reason is yung mga typhoon, yung mga ganon. But that is a uh, that, that should not be your excuse kasi palagi naman talagang may typhoon tayo. That should be considered already. Oh, you have to, to make a program na even if we have these calamities, we still achieve yung growth of agriculture equals the growth of population. Kasi otherwise, we have a problem with food security. Di ba? Kaya yun ang aim nyo na palaging sasabayin nyo yung population growth ng growth ng agriculture. Hindi nyo gagawing reason na nagkaroon ng calamity. E eh, talaga namang every year may calamity tayo. If you will make that a reason, we will never grow with the, ano, the population growth. So, palagi magkakaroon talaga tayo ng problem with our food security in the future. There is a, there is, ano, a prediction by the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization that we will have a uh, food shortage by 2050 all over the world. So yung inaasahan nyo na mag import kayo, mawawala yun. Kasi syempre yung, yung, yung mga taong nag -e export sa inyo, kung meron din silang uh, uh, food shortage, eh, hindi, i hindi nila i-export sa atin yung food. So we really have to be uh, self-sufficient in food. Kaya dapat talaga yung growth ng agriculture will grow with the growth of population. Oh, minimum yun. Oh, pag hindi kayo nakaabot doon, there's something wrong with you. Katulad nung sinasabi mo na mga courses ng ATI, di ba meron kanyong farm business school? Oh, di ba yun to teach the farmers how to operate their farm as a business? Oh, ngayon, 
bakit kayo umaasa sa DTI para turuan ng uh, mentoring yung ating mga farmer? Di ba, trabaho yun na ATI, you have this farm business school, so why are you not promoting it? O, oh, siguro sa aking school nyo lang itinuturo kasi natatakot kayo sa akin. Siguro hindi nyo tinuturo sa ibang school. O, oh, kaya ko lang naman kayo pinagtuturo sa school ko, baka para makita ko lang kung nagtuturo talaga kayo at alam nyo tinuturo nyo. Eh, katulad nitong kids course na to at urban agriculture, hindi ko to nakikita sa ATI. Ma'am, we will coordinate with you and we'll give you all the programs that are existing. Yes, ma'am. Mm -mm. uh, complete. Yes, ma'am. Mm -mm. Siguro ma'am, hindi lang na give it to you po. Report. If hindi niya alam yung farm business school, umaasa pa siya sa DTI, when in fact, uh, uh, meron kayo. Bakit kayo aasa sa DTI? Oh. Eh, meron naman kayong farm business school. Ba't hindi niyo sinabi kay Secretary Dar. Oh. Oh. Ano, papa-under pa kayo sa DTI? Oh. Mas malaki budget nyo kaysa DTI. Mas malaki kayong organization kaysa DTI. Oh. Bakit aasa kayo sa DTI? Oh. Hindi ba dapat kayo yon? When you teach agriculture, you do it. Huwag kayong umasa sa DTI. Nakaka-insulto yun. Para kayong second fiddle sa DTI? Ba't hindi kayo mag-promote ng sarili nyo na agriculture? Oh. Ba't tayo aasa sa DTI? Sila is processing. Tayo yung mag-produce mag ng raw material, sila yung mag-process. Pero para turuan nila tayo how to make our farms uh, feasible as businesses, that's your job. That's not the job of DTI. Ibig mo sabihin, mas magaling silang negosyante kesa inyo. Meron sila eh. Binigyan sila ng, ng ano ba yon ng, ng module ng UNFAO. Kasi nakita na UNFAO na mahina nga sa business yung ating mga agriculturists. Ibinigay sa inyo ng UNFAO yan eh. Yung Farm Business School module. And we are promoting that. Bakit kayo aasa sa DTI to promote that? Di ba dapat kayo yan? Sa inyo binigay yan ng UNFAO. Eh. To make our, our farms business models. Kasi pag ginawa mong business yung farm at kumita ng malaki, marami magpa-farming. Oh. Pero pag hindi nyo tinuruan silang mag-business para pakitain ng farm nila, iwanan nila farm nila. Kasi sino magtsatsaga sa isang farm? na hindi kumikita, oh, aalis yan dyan. Alam nyo, kaya ako kinrate yung farm school at saka yung tourist farm para additional income para sa farmer. Kasi pag ginawa nilang tourist farm, ang kanilang mga farm, then uh, kikita sa na ng malaki doon. Kasi may additional income. Uh, dadating ang tourist, magluluto sila. Siyempre, pag nagluto ka, mas malaki kita doon kaysa pakain mo na ro. Pagbili mo na ro, oh, may restaurant ka na. Pwede ka mag-process ng produkto mo para ipagbibili mo sa pasalubong center mo. Additional income yon. Pag gusto pa nilang matulog sa farm mo, pwede ka pa mag-lodging ano, doon, kikita ka doon. Tapos pag ginawa mo, kasi doon sa law na yon, you are mandated to build farm schools. Naglagay ako ng napakalaki sa TESDA, 1.4 billion para bayaran yung tuition ng lahat na mag-aaral sa farm school. If you teach 25 students in a farm school, you earn 100,000 a month. Nagugulat sila doon. Hindi nila alam yun. Hindi nyo sinasabi sa kanila yun. Oh, pag may 100,000 a month kang additional income in your farm school just by teaching 25 students, 
eh di, ang laki na ng kita mo. May 100,000 ka na sa farm school, may tourist farm ka pa, tapos meron ka pang kita doon sa crops mo, uh, pure crops. At ang magtatanim, eh yung studyante mo, hindi naman nila iuwi yun eh. Sa kanila yun eh. Sa farm yun matitira. Kasi parang on the job training lang yun. Di yung labor mo, yung mga estudyante nag-labor, tapos naipagbili mo yung crops mo. Di, ang laki ng kita mo. Ba't hindi nyo pinopromote yun? Kaya ako lang ginawa yun to make our farmers richer. Oo. So, ba't hindi nyo ipinopromote yun? Parang, ano kayo, umaasa pa kayo sa DTI para mag-promote? Bakit kayo umaasa doon? Mas malaki kayo. Ang budget nyo, 110 billion a year. Ang DTI, baka wala pang 10 billion ang budget nun. Tapos, sasabihin ko rin sa DepEd, you know, I have been to many regions in the Philippines. May mga, may mga probinsya, like yung Karaga, they have this, ano ah, yung contest ng gulayan sa paaralan. Oh, pero hindi ito pare-pareho. May mga region lang na may contest nito. Ang napuntahan ko lang ay eh, Karaga. May napuntahan ba kayong iba na may gulayan sa paaralan contest? Pampanga? Oh, hindi ako naimbita doon. Oh, doon sa Karaga, nag-award sila. Ba't hindi nyo gawing nationwide to? Oh. Um, actually, ma'am, it's being conducted by every region. Oh, eh, ba't, been... kayo, ba't hindi kayo magbigay ng nationwide award? for the best gulayan sa paaralan para may publicity yes, at may encouragement. But hindi yes, nyo ginagawa yun? We will, uh, as per... Ibigay mo sa akin ng may region na meron. Yes, Kasi wala ko na... Karaga lang ang nakita ko na regional yes, na nag-award. Yung sinasabi niyang Pampanga, province yun. Yes, ma'am. Meron po kasing um, policy po yung DepEd, ma'am, to give recognition to the best implementers no. of the GPP. Yung oh. ano, yung, uh, yung BIFAR. Mm -hmm. Ang pinopromote nila ay Masagana at uh, Masagana at uh, Marinis na karagatan. Mm -hmm. Oo. Ang first prize nila doon sa national, 30, billion, 30 million worth of project. Yes. Ang second prize nila, wag ka mag-yes. Ano to? Bifar to, hindi to Department of Education. Ang second prize nila is 15 million worth of project. Ang third price nila is 10 million worth of project. At ang kanilang regional winner, 5 million worth of projects. Ia-identify nung uh, LGU kung ano gusto nila. Eh, ba't hindi kayo magbigay ng ganun? Ma'am, I will get the data on how... Kasi yun, projects yun. Hindi naman pera yun, projects. So, mm -hmm. pag nagbigay kayo ng ganun, matutuwa sila pag bubutihin nila. Kasi pwede naman yung ibigay eh, classroom or whatever. Yung project din ng DepEd. Yeah. Kasi to ang binibigay nitong project, project din ng BIFAR. Oo. Kaya lang, may priority ka kasi iyo yung malinis at masaganang karagatan. Bakit hindi nyo bigyan ng gulayan sa paaralan? Para uh, mag-try sila harder. Kasi pag nanalo sila, may project sila. Yes. Ma'am, we will provide your office po on the data and on the incentives provided, if ever there is po, for the outstanding well, hindi implementers. Hindi ko nalalaman. Yun. Yes, ma'am. Oh, padala uh, nyo sa amin yun. Yes, Kasi that is against your performance. So, oh, kasi bakit pa nagtayo ng gulayan sa paaralan tapos hindi naman sinuport? Oh. Eh kasi ako, taga Las Piñas ako, wala ako nadidinig na gano'n sa Las Piñas. Oh, kung sinasabi nyo na nationwide yan, wala. Kinausap ko yung, ano, di ba, kinausap ko yung NCR director. Isa lang school sa NCR ang merong gulayan sa paaralan na sinusuportahan niya. Eh, bakit isa? Sa laki ng NCR? So, hindi totoong may programa kayo. Binubola niyo lang ako. Kasi ako, tagalas pinyas ako, wala akong nakitang ganyan. And tinanong ko yung NCR director niyo, wala sila. sabi mo kay Secretary Briones yan. Wala akong nakita. Ang nakita ko lang nag-award at ito binigay pa ng region is Karaga. Nagpunta ako sa kanila, nag-a-award sila. Yun lang ang nakita kong region na nag-award ng gulayan sa paaralan.
So I guess you have to change this. Kasi pag hindi tayo, ano, kaya yung mga, yung mga estudyante nyo, naging bobo na. Kasi hindi nyo tinulungan sa proper nutrition. Hindi naman reason noon yung quality of teachers alone, but the proper nutrition ng children, especially the poor children. Oh. Kaya sinisisi ko yung Department of Agriculture. Do you know that their uh, Philippine Carabao Center at saka yung kanilang uh, National Dairy Authority, they have been in existence for 26 years, both of them. But the production of dairy in the Philippines is 1% of demand. 99% are all imported. Siyempre, pag mahirap ang bata, kaya bang bumili na imported? Di hindi. So, wala na nagdi-drink ng milk na mahihirap na mga bata. Kaya, partly to blame kayo sa kabubohan ng mga bata. Yung result nung ano, international study na second to the last tayo, you are partly to blame. Kasi talaga mga bata, pinaiinom ng milk para tumalino. O, yung dairy program nyo, partly to blame doon. O, kaya hindi lang kasalanan nyo ng Department of Agriculture, kasalanan din ninyo. Kasi kung walang available na murang gatas para sa mga bata, paano iinom ng murang gatas ang mga bata? Di ba? Kaya ako, nagdi-distribute ako ng dairy project in all the provinces in the Philippines from my own uh, uh, allocation. O, oh, ano ginawa nung PCC mo? Ibinili ng, ibibili daw niya ng sasakyan para inspeksyonin yung amin dairy project. Sabi mo yung kay Secretary Dar, ba't ako ginaganon? Hindi ko naman galing sa budget nyo. Hindi nga ako nahingi sa budget nyo kasi baka pag humingi ako sa budget nyo, lalo ko matigas ang ulo nyo. O, ako na nga nagbigay eh. Tapos ibibili niya ng sasakyan para inspeksyonin yung dairy project. Kaya, 1%. <laughs> kasi binibili ng sasakyan para inspeksyonin ang dairy project. Hindi hindi ibibigay do sa project mismo. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, kasi daw yung, yung, yung building, eh, part daw yun ng, ano, ng uh, contribution ng local government. Eh kung mahirap ang local government at walang ibibili ng building, saan ilalagay yung processing center? Oh. Oh. Kasi ibibili niya ng sasakyan yung budget for processing center. Oh, ikaw, policy and planning. Oh, ganyan ba itinuro ng policy and planning sa inyo to create a lot of ano, bureaucracy and to create a lot of, of ano, uh, ano tawag doon? Overhead? Oh, oh, para masaya kayong lahat, pwera, agriculture. Okay, it says here, Director Glenn Panganiban, DA Bureau of Plant Industry, has a PowerPoint slide presentation on urban farming. Okay. So, thank you, uh, Senator. Um, first, ma'am, I would just like to uh, give a, our brief uh, position on, on the, the Senate bills. Uh, so... The Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Plant and Industry, fully supports the urban agriculture and related legislations since it gives legislative support and complements uh, Secretary Dar's instruction to its bureaus and DA family to develop further urban agriculture. Uh, we believe that this can be an alternative source of food and livelihood through farm employment, especially for city dwellers. As the Philippines is one of the top countries with people living in urban areas in 2019 and due to the increasing demands for f sources of food due to the recent calamities the country has faced, we would need every support we can muster um, 
and working on the prior achievements of the Gulayan sa Paaralan, which teaches students the basic concepts of nutrition, food supply, and rudiments of agriculture, as well as the Gulayan sa Barangay, which aims to establish communal gardens in the local government units. Um, with the schools, barangays, and government office, offices piloting this initiative, opportunities for partnership can also follow. Um, the, the sustainability of these projects is critical because we do not want to just launch the projects and then it will be forgotten. So these legislations would really help. All actors in the value chain or network should also be looked upon and use whatever technologies we have uh, and focus on different urban settings so that we can, we can sustain the initiative. Overall, we see that these legislations are important pieces which, which can aid the government in solving food security and food safety problems. Fewer people are going into the business of agriculture and this can be a good start to lay down the provisions such as where the agencies can converge, where funding can be sourced, and what are the sustainable ways to keep the program going. So, Honorable Senator, ito pong ating uh, uh, urban agriculture initiative po na ginagawa ay uh, ayan naman po yung rational niya. Uh, so, mataas nga po yung urban population natin. Um, may increase demand for food. As you mentioned earlier, yung solid waste po nag-i-increase nag, uh, nag din. And the food supply. Yes po, ma'am. Tama po. Tama po. So, yun po yung mga issues doon. So, food safety and supply source from unknown production processes. Kasi, pag konti po ang food, kung saan-saan na lang kinukuha. Import, kahit po walang traceability. Ah, basta may makain, sige, i-supply sa palengke. So, opportunities for in intensive cultivation in small spaces. Ito naman po yung opportunities. Again, yung nabanggit ko po, alternative food and livelihood source and utilization of spaces. Sige po, next slide please. So these are the objectives. Um, ang isa po nakikita namin, of course, nabanggit na rin po ito doon nga sa ating mga Senate bills, uh, additional sources of food and nutrition. And of course, to encourage and potentially increase the urban citizens, youth, and children's consumption of vegetables. Nabanggit niya po kanina, Senator, ayaw pong kumain ng mga bata ng gulay. <laughs> Parang, so baka po itong proyektong ito makakapag-encourage uh, sa kanila. And then to provide value-adding techniques for commodities na mapoproduce such as in processing of, uh, of mushrooms, hot chili sauce production, so that kung may labis man, meron po tayong mapaggagawa ng mas magandang ano, produkto. Next. So ito po ay ano lang po, basic framework lang po. So from the training, research, and extension, of course, with the ATI to help us Ibababa natin ito sa school gardens na ginagawa na po ngayon, both private and public. And then sa communities and then sa barangay gardens. So aside from providing alternative source of production of vegetables and other uh, agricultural goods, it can give awareness uh, of the benefits of crop production and encourage the youth contribute to the improved environment and sanitation. Gaya po ng sinabi ni Senator, pwede natin gawing organic fertilizers, yung mga food waste. Sustain urban gardening programs through production of manuals and guidelines. So, ayaw po nating makalimutan na lang. So, of course, with the help of uh, legislation, uh, with the help of ATI, producing manuals, of course, the DepEd collaboration po of government agencies. Ano po? Next po. So, ito po yung sa training. Itetrain natin yung ating mga, mga city dwellers, LGU man po yan, uh, kabataan mo po man yan, to producing fresh and clean vegetables for local consumption, um, utilization of available spaces, reduction of household waste, and promote uh, yung landscaping. So, hindi lang po for production ng ating iniisip, baka po mapapaganda pa natin yung ating mga spaces. Of course, it can create a, a more uh, parang lighter feeling kapag may vegetables and plants around. So, baka po mas maganda rin po yan para sa ating ano, uh, komunidad. Sige po. Uh, of course, yun po ang, ang ating focus po dito is to apply the research uh, findings for example po sa amin, sa BPI, yung, yung mga varieties po na na-produce, mga certified planting materials, yung po ang ipauna nating ibigay sa mga demo gardens. 
meron po kami mga technical uh, knowledge on vermicomposting and, and organic fertilizers. Uh, water... Organic fertilizer, vermicomposting, nang galing yun sa Bureau of Soil and Water Management. In all my life in the Department of Agriculture, I've never seen anyone from BPI. Kaya uh, what are you saying? Uh, You're uh, not practicing this. Uh, I've never po, seen you. I uh, have partnered with many agencies uh, of BPI. Wala. Ang nakasama ko lang, BIFAR, uh, ATI, at saka... The, yung, ano, yung BS, Bureau of Soil and Water Management. And then, ang, ngayon, recently, because of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, yung uh, uh, Phil Rice and Phil Mac. But I've never seen anybody from B D in any of my project yang BPI. So what are you saying? Ma'am, I will make sure po to, to be... In, in fact, yesterday... Uh, Secretary Dar was in uh, Baseco because uh, uh, kasali siya sa Mandamus Agency to clean Manila, Manila Bay. Bay. At kasama niya doon yung Bureau of Soil and BIFAR kasi nadiscovery niya na ang kapartner ko sa Baseco ay Bureau of Soil and Water Management. Nagtatayo sila doon ng urban garden at yung BIFAR nagtatayo sila ng aquaculture doon. Sabi niya pa doon sa Bureau of Soil, sabi mo sa BPI, tulungan ka. Yes, ma'am. Kasi ipinramis niya doon na uh, ipopromote talaga ang urban gardening at saka uh, uh, aquaculture sa uh, NCR. Kasi it will help in uh, uh, cleaning Manila Bay. Oo. Ngayon, ikaya sinasabihan niya yung Bureau of Soil na kausapin ka na tulungan siya sa kanyang urban gardening. Wala akong nakita na BPI na nag-promote ng urban gardening. In fact, nadidinig ko lang kayo sa regulator, as regulatory. But you've never done any project na nakita ko in all my seven years as chairman of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food. Wala kayong project. Sige po, ma'am. Uh, puro kayo regulatory. Kasi sa regulatory, kikita kayo. Kasi yung mag-a-apply sa inyo, magbabayad sa inyo. But yung sasabihin nyo, natutulong kayo sa mga tao para ma-promote ang agriculture. I've never seen a project from BPI. Mami. Baka yung bae pa, mm -hmm. nagtuturo sila. Alam mo, kaya dumami yung, yung ano tawag dyan, yung ASF. Kasi yung mga mahihirap sa Metro Manila, nag-alaga sila ng baboy. O, tapos yung pinakakain nila, yung mga uh, yung mga uh, kanin baboy. Yung kanin baboy pala, kailan lulutuin mo bago mo ipakain sa baboy? Kasi, yan ang source ng ASF. Eh, hindi naman nila niluluto. O, basta pinakakain nila sa baboy. Kaya yung paligid namin, puro may ASF. Yung Las Piñas lang wala. Kasi kami nag-alago ng baboy namin. Eh, ang baboy namin is ano, organic. Kinakain eh, damo. O, oh, sila lahat doon na ASF. O, oh. so dapat kayo sa urban, ipagbawal nyo na yung pag-aalaga ng baboy. Yan ang nag-ano uh, nung ASF eh. Dapat, ang in-encourage nyo sa urban areas is aquaculture and gardening. <laughs> kasi walang basura doon. At gumanda pa yung urban areas kasi nagtatanim tayo. Tapos yung ano, nalilinis pa yung ating mga shores because of aquaculture. So, yun. Eh, dapat BPI yun eh. Oh. Yes, Kaya dumami ASF eh. Kasi yung ba bako, may ASF sila eh. Kasi nakikita ko, pinapakain doon yung mga squatters. Sila nag-aalaga nag ng baboy. Oh. Pinakakain nila, yung katabi namin, pinakakain nila is ano, kanin baboy na hindi nila niluluto. Eh, yun ang may ASF eh. Kasi yung iba doon imported eh. ba? Diba? Oh, kasama doon. So, kasi ang ASF nanggaling sa abroad. So, iniluto. Eh, yung ASF, hindi naman nakakamatay ng tao yan eh. Pero nakakamatay ng baboy yan. Yun, yung pinakain nila doon, na ASF lahat kami doon. Laki-laki ng binayad doon sa mga baboy para ilibing at patayin. Kasi yung mahihirap na backyard farmers, pag hindi mo binayaran, trade nila yon 
Hindi naman, wala naman silang pakailang kung kumalat ang ASF. Basta gusto lang nila, may source of income sila. And you can understand that because mahihirap sila. So, pag hindi binayaran ng DA, tinitrade nila yun, kaya kumalat ang ASF. Tapos yung iba, hinulog pa sa, sa ano, sa river. Oh, di lalong kumalat. Oh, kaya ibig sabihin, importante yung aquaculture ang ma-develop sa Metro Manila at saka urban gardening kasi para ma-discourage na yung nag-aalaga ng baboy sa Metro Manila. Kasi yan ang nagkakasakit. Oh. Eh kasi ako nakita ko lahat eh. Kasi taga Metro Manila ako. Eh. Di ba Quezon City, yung lahat ng mga informal settlers sa Quezon City, sila nag-develop ng ASF. At saka yung mga informal settlers sa Bacoor. Sila ang na-ASF. Oh, kasi nakikita ko sila, eh. hakot-hakot nila yung kanin baboy. Eh. May, they do not even uh, uh, ano, lutuin yun para mawala yung, yung ASF doon. Oh. Ayun, lahat kami ASF doon. Kaya magpipresent sa akin kayo, vermicomposting. Did you ever help us in vermicomposting? <laughs> in, uh, in ano, wala. Walang tumulong na BPI. Tumulong sa amin talaga is yung uh, Bureau of Soil and Water Management. Sila namimigay ng machine for vermicomposting and uh, rotary composting. Oh, never. Never ko kayo nakita, Ms. Kisang beses. Kaya don't talk about it. You don't know. You okay, don't practice that. Wala akong nakita nagbigay sa amin ng seeds. Wala. Wala naman nagbigay ng seed. Nabili ako sa East West Seeds. Pag namimigay ako sa mga farmer, hindi man ako nakakahingi sa inyo ng seeds. Kasi pag kayo nagbigay ng seeds, pangit ang seeds. Kasi may supplier kayo ng pangit na seeds na suki nyo. Siguro malaki lagay sa inyo. Hindi man ako nahingi ng seeds sa inyo kasi pangit ang seeds nyo. Eh. Nabili ako sa East West Seeds. At kami ang nag-vermicomposting at rotary composting. Wala naman tumulong sa amin. Eh. Bureau of Soil. Ngayon, tutulong daw ang DNR. Oh. Pero talaga, in all the years that I am with you, it's Bureau of Soil and Water Management. Okay. Yan lang nakita ko. Okay. Kaya malaki sama ng loob ko sa inyo. Ma'am, we will coordinate po with your oh, office for sure. Huwag ka magsalita yes, ng ganyan. Okay, ma'am. Because next, I never see you doing that. Next slide, oh. please. Kayo palagi kayong regulatory. Okay. Yung mga import permit ang inaasikaso nyo. Kasi malaki kita sa import permit. Recycled import permit. Recycled import permit. Eh kasi ako, matagal akong negosyante. Alam ko lahat yan. Okay, Ito na mo, pag import permit, busy busy sila. Pero developmental, wala. Ano yung 48 schools in 2019? Ma'am, ito po yan? yung, uh, may list po kami that we can share Ibigay with you, ma'am. Ibigay mo sa akin. Uh, ano ito yung po 48 yung nabigyan namin ng ano. Alam mo, sa Las Piñas, Iha, ang palaging nananalo, yung principal na mahilig sa, ano, walang nanalong ibang school. Siya lang. Kung siya'y lumipat ng school, yun pa rin na mananalong school. Oh, yung principal lang na mahilig sa gulayan sa paaralan. Walang nanalo sa kanya other than him. Kaya yung aming winner ng gulayan sa paaralan, every year siya. Kung saan siyang eskwela na naandun, yun ang nananalo. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na ituro sa mga school principal that they practice gulayan sa paaralan. Oh. Yung mga subdivision, yung mga barangay, nagbabago ng nananalo. But in the school, yun lang principal na mahilig na yun. Yun lang nananalo every year. Pag lumipat siya ng school, yung school niyang nilipatan, yun ang mananalo. At may experience, ha? Kaya hindi nyo ako pwedeng lokohin kasi madetalyado ako eh. I, I do it. I do it. I practice what I preach. Kaya taon-taon meron kaming contest ng gulayan sa paaralan. Yung is, yung yung principal na yun na mahilig sa agriculture, siya lang ang nananalo every year. Walang nananalong iba. Kaya I don't think na in-encourage nyo ang mga principal nyo to do it. From my experience. 
Oh, tapos na, natawag ko na yung NCR director niyo sa hearing. Iisang school ang sinasight niya sa buong NCR na may gula yan sa paaral. Sasabihin mo sa akin na may award kayo regional. Wala. Hindi totoo yun. Kasi kung meron, di nabalitaan ko yun, di ba? Uh, Najaryo yun or what? At least si yung BIFAR, meron talaga sila. Si President Duterte pa nag award every year. Yung masagana at malinis na karagatan. O, tsaka ang laki ng award nila. Kaya dumadating yung mga gobernador na nananalo. O, dumadating. Kasi ang laki. 30 million. O, worth of projects ang first place. O, bakit hindi naman may encourage ko Ako naman ang may eskwelahan. At malalagay ako sa dyaryo, pakikilala pa ako sa presidente, tapos uh, bibigyan ako ng 30 million worth of projects. Bakit? Hindi naman ako magpapakabuti. Di ba? Oh. So, you really failed. Sabihin mo kay Secretary Briones, si pinasasabi ko, that you really failed in Gulayan sa paaralan. Kasi may experience in my own city. Oh. Yung talaga palaging nananalo every year. Oh, kasi mahilig talaga siya sa agriculture, hindi dahil in-encourage siya ng DepEd na gawin. Mahilig siya. Siya lang ang mahilig doon sa aming buong bayan. Anyway, so we're finished Apo. with uh, DA. Yes, we have other uh, resource person coming from the Parent Teacher Association of the Philippines, Mr. Wilfredo Rodriguez. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, we're, uh, we're from National PTA. We're established in, uh, we created in 2013, okay? Uh, sa DEPIT po, ma'am, okay, uh, ang problema namin sa inyo, okay, uh, PTA kasi lang po ginagamit nila for collection. Uh, fundraising, collection. So ngayon, kapag ka, nagkaroon ng ano, uh, PTA meeting, ayaw na ng mga parents kasi gastos. Okay. We are... Ang PTA, we have 27 million students, okay? Ang PTA po natin is 57 million. So, ito mga PTA, parents na to, they always stay in the school. So, pagka binigyan mo ng project at sinabi mo sa mga bata, hindi nila magagawa. So, kami sa National PTA, kailangan pa namin kumuha ng kain trip to Para pag, may mm. hihinga ng pera dito. We just want to know yes, if you okay. are supportive of this project. Yeah, we're very supportive Kasi katulad, po, ma'am. Yeah. katulad nung nandun sa Oton, Iloilo, yung mga PT, yung mga parents, sila yung nagluluto. Opo, ma'am. We do that. every mm -hmm. lunch time. But yung mga bata ang nagtatani. Okay, ma'am. Uh, for example, uh, ano lang po, ma'am. Okay, we have these agencies, okay? So, PTA Lux Project. We're looking for projects, for example, to utilize us, to incapacitate us. So ngayon, madali namin may disseminate yan sa schools. So ang DepEd, ang mga memorandum nyo, ma'am, hindi nyo binibigay sa parents. Okay? Wala kaming connection sa inyo. You, treat, you only treat us na yung para bang sa collection lang sa ano. Okay? What's happening? Okay, ma'am. Uh, no collection policy. Okay. The problem with PTA... Okay, we have different orders na hindi naman ini-implement. Hindi, ano kayo nakolekta sa inyo ng DepEd? Money. For Wait. what? Uh, for projects inside the school to help the ano school. Ano project inside the schools? Okay, uh, okay, what's happening naman? Okay, uh, in 2013, I started as a PTA. Uh -huh. So, I saw a lot of problem then about ano yung mga... Ano project nyo inside the schools? Okay. Uh -huh. What kind of projects are they collecting from you? Okay, it's a money project. Ana? Money project. Okay, oh what? Lord. Okay, ma'am. Okay, uh, project. Uh, okay, Mr. and Miss to develop schools, ma'am. Okay, for example, yung uh, call this educational projects just to get money. Okay, uh, ma'am. Okay, project. Okay, for example, okay, yung mga school na yung ating yung mga bubong. Uh, for but the their budget for the biggest budget ng government of the Philippines is DepEd. Yeah, that's why so, po, ma'am. Silang first, ang second is DPWH. Yes, ma'am. So, okay, ma'am. Uh, may 600 billion, di ba? O, yeah. ba't kayo mangungulekta sa mga estudyante? 
Yeah, that's it. No collection policy. RA 5546, no collection policy, no selling of tickets, mm. no field trips. Mm. Okay. That goes only to the officials of DepEd in the front line, victimizing students, poor students. So that's where. Uh, gumawa ka ng ano dyan? Report yeah. at ipadadala ko kay Secretary Briones. Baka oh, yes, hindi niya alam kasi yeah. nasa taas siya. Hindi niya mm -hmm. alam yung nangyayari sa baba. Ba't uh, nangungulekta? Yeah. Oh, Ba't nangungulekta? The problem is, ma'am, okay, we are, pinadala na po namin yan. Ang nagiging at saka ba't ka mag-miss-miss-miss? O di magulayan ka na lang kaysa miss-miss-miss. Ano ang <laughs> maipapang, ma mapapakinabang natin doon? Puro gastos yun. Yeah. Eh, di sana nagulayan na lang kayo. May napakinabang pa yung mga anak nyo. Uh, kumain ng ayos yung anak nyo, naging matalino yung anak nyo. Kasi pag hindi natin talaga binigyan ng proper nutrition ang mga bata, hindi sila tatalino. Sinasabi ko yun, yun sa inyo. That's very important. So, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, kasi kayo, katulad ko, kung ako ay nanay at tatay, mas gusto ko na tumalino yung anak ko kaysa maging miss. So, ano yun, mag-aartista. So, buti ko maging artista. Lalo na ko yung miss-miss eh, botohan ng pera. Oh, eh di magiging miss ka dahil maraming pera yung magulang mo. Hindi dahil maganda ka or ma ma smart ka, di ba? Hmm. O di wala rin say-say yun. Di magulayan na lang sa paaralan. Mas better pa yun. Kakain pa ng maganda yung mga bata, tatalino sila, at pag tumalino sila, this will be a better country because we are producing very intelligent children. Di ba? Di ba mas tama yun? Oo. Kasi minsan, pumapayag din kayo eh. Ba't kayo pumapayag? Oo. I-report natin. O, sumulat kayo sa akin, report natin sa DepEd yung anong ginagawa nila. Di naman tama yun. O, kaya nga nasa public school ba yung association nyo? O, eh, kaya nga nasa public school eh. Di balik kong private school. Mas mayayaman yung mga magulang. Yung nasa public school, mas mahihirap ang magulang nun. Kasi ako, nanggaling ako sa public school. Kasi yung nanay ko, kuripot, hindi ako pinag-aaral sa private school, sa public school ako. I remember when I was young, nagtatanim kami. Nagtatanim kami. I remember, uh, meron pa kaming ilog do sa tabi ng school namin, do kami kukuha ng tubig, tas pandidilig namin do sa tinatanim namin. Ang ginagamit pa namin, uh, what do you call this, yung timba. Hindi nga kami nabili ng timba kasi noon yung mantika, nasa timba eh. Oh, so, yun ang aming uh, timba. Lahat kami sa public school may timba. Dala-dala namin yun kasi magtatanim kami. Tapos kami mag-iisis nung aming desk. At uh, wala kaming binibiling isis. May puno ng isis, dahon ng isis. Yun iniisis namin. Tapos nagbubunot kami sa aming classroom. Ngayon yata, mga magulang, ayaw pagtrabahuhin yung anak. Ayaw nila na mag pa-planting, mag-iisis, mag -ano, nagagalit sa teacher, sasabihin eh, pinahihirapan ng anak nila. Eh ako, kung tuturoan ng anak ko magsipag, eh di tuwan-tuwa ako kaysa ako ang magturo sa anak ko magsipag. Oh. Kaya da, tama rin na pinagtatrabaho yung mga bata para lumalaki silang masisipag. <laughs> Kasi kaya naging tamad eh, ayaw niyong pagtrabahuhin sa eskwelahan. Kasi nung bata kami, ako, anak ako ng doktor, pero nag-gardening ako, daladala ko yung aking timba at nagdidilig ako, nag-iisis ako ng desk. Naalala ko nun, pag uh, hindi kami nasunod sa teacher, eh, but, lalo kang pag-iisisin ng desk. <laughs> Kasi parusa sa iyo, mag-isis ka ng desk. <laughs> Kaya, ibig sabihin, uh, that's teaching good values to children, whether you're rich or poor. You must learn how to work hard para umasenso ka sa buhay. Kasi that is really the, ano, the, oh, binibigay mo to sa akin ngayon eh, dati eh, ano, oh, wag mo ilus, ilista las pinyas, kasi ako nagbabayad niyan, kaya nagtatanim yan. May kontes ako eh. Eh, tinanong ko yung inyong ano, sabi niya, isa lang do vegetable garden sa buong NCR eh. Sabi nung DepEd, o, oh, tinan mo to, o, oh, 
Uh, three on the average every city. Oh, can you imagine? Katulad namin, ang schools namin is uh, 30. May 30. Oh, oh, bakit 3? Di 10% ang nag-vegetable garden. Malito. Yang Las Piñas, hindi tatlo yan. May kontes yan eh. Oh, dito, oh. three in every schools, where there are 30 schools. So, 10% ang nagugulay yan sa paaralan. Ba't mo sasabihin sa akin na lahat ay nagugulay yan sa paaralan? Hindi nyo naman pinopromote yan eh. Our problem also in ano in Gulayan, siguro. Okay, uh, lack, we lack spaces po sa mga schools. So, at least siguro, kung ma-utilize ma natin tulad na sinasabi ng rooftops, yeah. Mm. Yeah, rooftop, yeah. Eh, lalagyan mo rin yun ng landscaping. Di landscape mo na nagula yan. Diba? So, wala. I don't think there is problem ng space. It's not a big space. It's just planting. Oh, the, the notion of planting. And ilan na ba lang ang cities? Eh, buong Pilipinas, ang laki-laki. Naku, sa mga ano, sa mga probinsya, pagkalaki-laki ng ano, ng uh, mga space nila sa paaralan. It's not only in Metro Manila. Even in Metro Manila, kami Metro Manila. Easement lang ng building, pwede na yan. Hindi yan. So I, you can say, ang conclusion is you're supportive. Yeah, very supportive po kami yan. We can the same. Naman ang gusto namin malaman that the yeah. PTA are supportive of Gulayan sa paaralan. And we can also disseminate it po. Yeah, kasi yeah. we're, ano, our duty now is uh, information and service agency. Okay. Up to, ano. okay. Thank you very Thank much, you much, Mr. Wilfredo Rodriguez. We now hear from Ms. Irwin Belen, Chapter President, NCR Chapter, Philippine Association of Agriculturists. Thank you. Good morning po, Madam Senator. Uh, Madam, we have a presentation po on, uh, we are supportive of the bills on urban agriculture. Uh, I'll be giving po yung, ano, uh, yung position paper po namin. Uh, we have submitted po sa Secretariat. Can you make sa a position paper also that you are Nasa email po. I sent to I sent to email po. Pero madam, ano po, um, habang pini-prepare po yung presentation, uh, just to have a brief intro, uh, brief, uh, intro po of uh, Philippine Association of Agriculturists. Uh, the Philippine Association of Agriculturists is the one and only accredited integrated professional organization of the ag agriculture profession in the Philippines. Uh, we are involved in agricultural policy, advocacy, research, and formulation as well as enterprise building communications, training, and community development. And, uh... So, sa government? Uh, we're, ano po, uh, accredited po ng PRC as the... No, no, with Department of Agriculture, because yes, you so, are agriculturist, you should have uh, a joint 
program with the Department of Agriculture. Sino yes, ka partner niya sa Department uh, of Agriculture? Right now po, we're partnering po with the uh, DA. Uh, DA, ma. DA proper po. Ano? Sa DA Hindi proper. Hindi nga, ano nga DA? Dami-dami niyan DA. Meron sa, ano? Yes, oh, sino ang ka-partner kayo? Some of them are providing advisory Advice. services directly to the Secretary. Uh, Apo. So, and part of what? Uh, OSEC po. And uh, also, ma'am, our members po are uh, the agriculturists who are also employed by the government. So we are uh, in all regions in the Philippines. Uh, we have seven accredited national professional organizations covering different uh, subjects po on uh, agriculture, such as crop science, soil science. And uh, we have, uh, right now, we have 4,700 active members po. So, madam... Uh, why are we supporting urban agriculture? So first, we want to have food security for the communities and uh, nationwide as well. And uh, we would also want to promote localization of food. So instead na magre-rely po tayo from external sources, uh, bakit hindi natin encourage yung mga uh, tao na within their community, they provide uh, food for them. And also, nakikita din po natin dito ano yung mga positive environmental impacts ng urban agriculture such as uh, nakapagpaganda po ng mga kap nakapaligiran. It will also reduce po yung napuproduce natin na carbon emissions dahil yung pong uh, food natin, tinatransport natin yan from other places to let's say Metro Manila. So, ganong karami po yung napuproduce natin na carbon dioxide and it will uh, help or it will uh, uh, mas nagiging worse po yung ating global warming due to the transportation of our food. So, uh, just to have a brief background po, uh, yung mga there are also available technologies on urban agriculture, uh, such as uh, indoor farming, uh, IoT in urban farming. So, pwede na pong mag-manage ngayon, uh, Madam Senator, uh, kahit, nasa mal kahit malayo po sa farm through the use of the technology. Uh, we also produce uh, food through hydrophonics, aquaphonics, and aerophonics po. So, uh, yung aquaphonics po right now, we have a project po at uh, Barangay Ususan, Tagig. So, this is also supported po ng isang NGO, the Rise Against Hunger Philippines. Uh, they will be providing po uh, the... Yes po. Yung... Uh, Nakapartner po kami ngayon with one hotel na sila po yung uh, bibili, Conrad Manila po. They will be buying yung mga lettuce na mapoproduce from that farm. So initially po, uh, from our donors dun po sa Rise Against Hunger Philippines, so sila po yung nagbigay ng capital. Yes po, NGO po. Uh, Bali, they are uh, towards eradicating hunger po. Uh, Rise Against Hunger, Philippines. Bali, ano po sila? International group din po sila, madam. Ayun po. And uh, also... Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll provide po. Also, ma'am, ano po, uh, we have a project din po in Barangay East Rembo, Makati. Actually, dun po sa presentation ko, we, uh, may represent po kong video. East Rambo, Makati po. And uh, actually, ma'am, it's a project supported by the Department of Agriculture. So the DA has provided us uh, inputs, uh, equipment, and uh, also the seeds. May project po through BPI po. Uh, ano po siya, under din po siya nung uh, pagkain para sa masa project po. So, uh, mag-submit na lang po kami ng report sa office ninyo about our current pro ano po, projects. Wala. Um, we will. I'm siguro.
Yun po. Pero madam, Hindi ano ko naman? kayo nadidinig na nasa probinsya. Di ba? Ba't ka pupunta sa Makati? Ano? Ano? May mahirap daw na area sa Makati. Walang mahirap na area. Kung ako may bayan na 15 billion ang income ko, paano maghihirap ang mga tao sa bayan ko? Oh. Hindi totoo yun. 15 billion na income na Makati eh. Ba't kayo nasa Makati? Samantalang ang dami-dami naghihirap na bayan sa Pilipinas, hindi nyo tinutulungan. Ba't kayo nasa Makati? Ayun po, ma'am. Um, actually, ma'am, the area po is uh, one of the uh, lo one of the lowest income po within the Makati, mga barangay oh, po. So we're supporting. Dapat... Hiningan nyo ng pera yung mayor ng Makati. 15 billion na year eh. Yes po ma'am. Oh. So yun po. 15 um, billion na year eh. Bakit ka hihingi sa DA? Ang DA should be in the countryside and helping the poor people in the countryside. Alam mo ba ang kahirapan sa, sa NCR? Kami, 1.8%. Hmm. Ang kahirapan sa probinsya, 34% of the population are poor. But in the NCR, kami, Las Piñas, 1.8%. Ba't matutulungan yung ang kahirapan ay 1.8%? Kaya sila mahirap sa NCR, tamad sila. Kasi sa NCR, hindi ka pwede maghirap. Ang daling kumuha ng trabaho eh. Oh. At a minimum wage. Oh. Two-income family, minimum wage is 30,000. Di ba? Hindi yun ang definition ng mahirap. Whereas the Filipino farmers... Ano sila? 4,500 a month. It takes 6,300 to feed a family. So sila ang mahirap. Why are you in Makati? Ano reason mo? Dahil mahirap yung taga Makati. Problema ni Abi B na yun. Hindi natin problema yun. Mas malaki yung problema natin sa countryside. 34% ang kahirapan sa countryside. Sa urban areas, it's 11. Kaya 11 plus 34 divided by 2, 22% ang kahirapan. Oh. Kaya lang bumaba ngayon because bumaba ang presyo ng pagkain. Bumaba ang inflation rate, kaya naging 16, 16.6. Oh. Ma'am, to give a background po, this is an initiative po ng barangay. Hindi po siya... Uh With the yeah, but don't CPNG. ask from DA. Yes, po. Because DA is supposed to be taking care of farmers who are poor. Yes, ma'am. Hindi yung mayayaman na taga Makati. Opo. Kasi kung may problema sa Makati, 15 billion ang income nila every year. Yes, ma'am. They can finance it. Yes, po. So Just like me, I don't ask from DA or Las Piñas. Oh. Yes, po. Oh, I ask, I, I, I do it myself, di ba? I don't ask from them. Kaya ako lang sila iniimbita sa Las Piñas. Gusto ko lang makita kung alam nila yung ginagawa nila <laughs> with my own eyes. Oh, kaya nagtuturo kami ng training the trainers. And yung training the trainers namin, hindi taga Las Piñas yun. Yung Las Piñas covers uh, Region 4A, Region 4B, and Bicol. And yung farm school ko sa San Jose del Monte, Bulacan, covers Region 3, Region 1, Region 2, and CAR. Oh. So it's training the trainers. Para yung trainers, uuwi sa probinsya nila at sila magtuturo doon oh, ng mga good agricultural practices. Ayun po. Um, Madam Senator, ano po... Um, yung nung po sa project kasi namin, we are uh, actually doing the waste. Actually, to... this urban gardening, pag ginawa to, I will ask the LGU to finance this. I will not ask DA. Kasi urban areas, yes. they have money. And uh, lalaki pa ang kanilang uh, ira ngayon by 2021 kasi nanalo sila sa Supreme Court na ang laki bibigay na ira ng national government sa kanila. So, I will pass a law that they will allocate a certain percentage of their era para sa urban agriculture, para sila mag-finance nito. And I will not be giving budget to the DA, additional budget. I will ask the LGU to finance this. Kaya lang, tayo sa DA, we should give them the, ano, 
capability to teach and to ano to implement to o yun na ibibigay natin o and then sila na kasi may mayaman sila eh. may pera sila eh. o lahat ng cities may pera kaya nga yung yung uh, DNR mamimigay sila ng plastic recycling factory sa lahat ng cities and probinsya kasi kaya nung mag-subsidize nung cost of producing the chairs pero sa mga bayan ang ibibigay nila is composting kasi hindi naman nung kaya mag-subsidize mahihina ang income so ibibigay nila yung composting para yung kanilang mga mga kitchen and garden waste magawa nilang organic fertilizer para yung mga farmer nilang mahihirap hindi na bibili ng fertilizer sila na magpo-produce out of their waste na solve pa natin yung kanilang basura and then nakatulong pa sa mga farmer kasi malaking input is fertilizer if we can produce organic fertilizer then that would help our farmers sige nga iho ano mo yang ano mo ayan so uh Again, uh, po, uh, our stand po is we support uh, urban the ur urban agriculture bills. Next slide, please. Uh, so, ayun po. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. So, our reason po for supporting urban agriculture, the urban agriculture bill spending before this committee po is uh, for food security and also uh, we want localization of uh, food supplies and uh, the positive environmental impacts of urban agriculture. Next slide, please. So, throughout our history po, uh, there has been four uh, agricultural revolutions at it defined po ko ano yung meron tayo ngayon, especially for urban agriculture. Next slide, please. So, there are technologies that are available for urban agriculture, such as indoor farming, uh, IoT in urban farming, hydrophonics, aquaphonics, and aerophonics. Okay, next slide, please. So, uh, I have also identified po a value chain na pwede po natin maging template on how we can do urban agriculture. So this is based po on, from our experience in uh, East Rambo, Makati, and uh, Taguig, na kung saan yung farm po is community supported. So uh, the input provisions are coming from uh, LGUs, the DA, uh, private and uh, private suppliers as well. So they provide seeds, seedlings, agricultural chemicals, plastic mulch, and other equipments and tools. Uh, it's been supported po ng mga donors po. Hindi po DA. And then uh, our enablers po, uh, we see uh, DA as uh, one of the uh, biggest supporter of urban agri. Uh, we also need uh, financing support, uh, su also support from the academe, uh, the LGUs, uh, up to the barangay level, and also for the policies as well. So, tinitingnan din po namin for the production side, dapat ito po ay supported ng community. So, hindi lang po siya basta project lang ng isang farmer. Dapat po isang community sila na nagpo-produce who has the ownership of the problem on food. And then, sila na rin po yung mag-a-assemble, sila na rin yung magbebenta. At pwede rin po sila magkaroon ng mga uh, weekend markets or a vegetable subscription para doon na po sila kumikita uh, sa production. Okay, next slide, please. So I'll be, I'll be presenting po yung case study namin sa Barangay East Rembo, Makati. So this uh, urban agriculture project has been supported by the Barangay East Rembo. And uh, we also uh, asked help din po from different stakeholders. So aside from DA, we have other uh, supporters as well po. So next slide, please. Uh, I'll present po a video on uh, what, what has been done in the project.
Madam, I'll provide the, uh, a video po on the... Yes po. Actually, Madam, this one is... Uh, it was shown in the ANC, Think Possible. So, uh, they have uh, shown the... Yes. Israel to study that. Ang kinote nila sa amin ang mahal-mahal. So if we want to promote urban agriculture, we cannot do that unless may magpuy-finance nung yung ganyang klase. We just do the ordinary agriculture na mura lang kasi wala naman pera yung mga schools para gawin yan. No? Mapalad kayo kasi meron kayong magdo-donate niyan. Kasi I've studied that, it's expensive. Kailangan mayaman na magtatayo ng ganyan. In fact, we encourage the private sector to do that. Yung nagagawa ng ganyan dun sa, ano daw ng China, sabi niya sa akin, 1,000, uh, 10,000 per square meter ang cost sa kanya. So yung 5,000 square meter niya, 50 million pesos. Kaya lang, maganda daw na, Naka, na ang, ang ano niya, na nababawi niya, sabi niya. But, but who will have 50 million pesos? <laughs> Di yun lang mga businessman. So we encourage that sa private business. But for us, yung mga public school, they cannot afford that. We'll just do the traditional uh, farming. Kasi they're not there to make money naman. They're just there to provide uh, uh, what you call this, vegetable to the students para maging healthy sila and uh, kung sumobra, may pagbibili nila. Yun lang naman ang ano. So, can you give me a uh, uh, copy na lang so I'll watch it. Okay, Ma sige. Thank you very much. We'll call on the chat. They're here. Eh. Uh, uh, the Cocopea first. Huh? Okay, thank you. Good morning. So, Cocopea is the unifying uh, voice of private education in the Philippines with more than 2,000 member institutions. So, basically, ma'am, we support the bill. It's just that we have certain issues that we would like to be addressed. So, number one is, uh, I think it was addressed earlier, the space in private schools. Because not all private schools have the, the space or the lot for these uh, gardens. And uh, there are some schools who are just leasing. So, uh, I think this will be... And, it's not requiring you a big space. Mm -hmm. no? Basta meron lang token for gulayan sa paaralan. Para yes, ano, kasi kung mag -e exempt naman tayo, then we are not encouraging. So, hindi naman kayo i -re require to build a big vegetable mm -hmm. garden. What you can really afford in terms of space okay. in your, ano, we will not be strict on that. It's okay. just that we want to teach the children how to do agriculture. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, our next uh, uh, issue, ma'am, is that implementing the requirements under the law would require the schools to allocate certain funds. And uh, training, uh, I think, because if you want this to be sustainable, there should be appropriate training, cultivating the garden, hiring the right uh, personnel for the job. So, however, uh, we believe that in the fund, there's no support uh, given to the private education institutions. And uh, if there's no funding, then uh, ultimately, the, the parents who will bear, uh, the students who will bear this, uh, the fundings needed for this uh, project. Uh, I think the only uh, incentive provided under the law is that uh, the donors, they get uh, tax exemption from, from, or I think it's tax exempt. But uh, we should learn how to get uh, donors na lang. And then we tax exempt yung ano, donation niya sila sa inyo. That's noted, ma'am. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, another, uh, another issue, ma'am, is that uh, if possible, we don't want to make this as a uh, prerequisite for the grant of permit or recognition. Because we believe, ma'am, that as schools, we should be your partners in implementing this. And if, if this will be a prerequisite, how can we operate as a school if, uh, if this will be an onset requirement for before a school can but operate? But do you think it's bad for 
you to be required to do this for the sake of food security of our nation, di ba? Ma'am, uh, uh, yung mag ayoka kasi ng school has certain responsibilities. Yes, ma'am. You cannot say that you cannot be required something like this. Mm -hmm. Kasi this is for the good of the nation, mm -hmm. di ba? And it's not bad to require you to teach agriculture to your students. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, we, we, we agree that uh, this can be a requirement but not as a prerequisite for the grant of recognition and permit. So, uh, so I guess we... we how do you propose we can force you to do it? Uh, like, for example, ma'am, there are policies uh, implemented by DepEd that uh, that would, uh, if we f if the school would fail to comply, there are certain uh, uh, infractions or penalty that the school would incur. So it's not necessarily as a requisite for the permit or recognition, ma'am. Ano ang position mo sa DepEd, Iha? I'm the legislative liaison specialist, ma'am, at DepEd. Kasi yung question nila eh. Kasi sino ba magbibigay ng permit sa private school? Di ba, DepEd? Yes po, DepEd. So that's their question. How we, can we require them to encourage agriculture and yet not make this a requirement for their uh, ano, permit? Or permit? Yeah. Um, we will check with the uh, guidance on the DO88. Of, oh, which, yeah. which, that's uh, why it's important that uh, you tell them that they, when they send representative somebody that can answer the questions. Kasi kung kayo eh, mga ano lang doon, tapos hindi nyo naman ma-answer ang question, paano ba yan? Oh. Sabihin mo kay Secretary Bjornes, next time you send someone that can uh, discuss policies. I don't answer me na I have to ask. Oh. Dapat may opinion na kayo dyan kasi yun ang question nila. How can we force them to do it and uh, not by not making it a prerequisite to their, ano, to their, uh, parang, ano, permit. Oh, oh. So how do we do that? Kasi that's the question. Oh, oh. Kasi hindi naman pwede na we will just say in the law that if they want to, they can do it or not do it. We want to force them to teach their children, even if they're rich children, to love agriculture. But how do we do it without... Uh, for uh, being part of the requirement of their permits. So you have to answer that. Uh, okay. Next. Uh, we asked Chad. Uh, Ma'am, we also have a suggestion. i uh, sorry. I'm, I'm done na po ba? Sige na, Chad. Okay, good morning, Madam Chair. Thank you for inviting Chad to this uh, meeting. And we shall submit our official position paper as soon as it is uh, signed by our chair, uh, Dr. Prospero de Vera III. Uh, um, Ma'am, uh, we fully support the proposed measures on urban agriculture and vertical farming. Agriculture is among the STEAM courses or science, technology, engineering, agriculture, and mathematics uh, courses that uh, CHED is channeling the beneficiaries of student financial assistance programs. Example, the okay, CHED scholarship program. Kasi you will not be required. You will just, uh, no. I just want to know what is your project? Uh, ano ang magiging role ng CHED to help in implementing this? Kasi uh, may mga College of Agriculture kayo, mga ganon. Ang tatanungin ko sa inyo, kasi wala naman kayong say dito. Yes, it's DepEd really. Kasi mm -hmm. we're requiring it in the uh, uh, elementary and high secondary school in the Philippines. So it's DepEd really who will give the permit, di ba? But ang CHED, ang role nyo is what are you doing to help this program na urban agriculture and uh, gulayan sa paaralan? What do you think will be your role? Kaya kayo na andito to tell us what will be your role? Ano maitutulong nyo para mag-succeed yung gulayan sa paaralan at saka yung urban agriculture? Yun ang gusto ko marinig sa inyo. Hindi, hindi yung, kasi wala naman kayong role dito in terms of permits. Kasi we will, we will not be requiring yung, ano, yung 
uh, state universities and colleges mm -hmm. for this. We're just requiring the elementary and the secondary school. Mm -hmm. But kayo, ano maitutulong nyo to make this succeed, this uh, ano, effort of the government? Yes, ma'am. Uh, nabasa po namin dun po sa proposed measure po ni Senator Grace po na yung pong inclusion po dun sa National Service Training Program. Uh, sa ngayon po, uh, in place pa po yung common module po ng implementation ng National S uh, Service Training Program kung saan yung topic po ng environmental protection ay nakapaloob po doon yung mga methodologies po ng tree planting or tree growing activity. In pursuance po sa mga palisiya at mga batas po na na inilabas po ng DENR at saka mga National Greening Program in the Philippines. At sa kasalukuyan po, uh, ito pong uh, riba, uh, common modules po ng uh, NSTP ay uh, ini-enhance po at uh, kasama po ang representative po ng Senate doon po sa aming technical working group at na uh, magkakaroon po kami ng um, right shop para po uh, dito sa pagsusulat po ng revised uh, common uh, minimum standards po ng uh, ano ba yung NSTP national modules. Se national Service Training Program? Explain mo nga yun sa akin. Ang National Service uh, Training Program po uh, aimed at enhancing civic consciousness and defense preparedness po sa youth by developing the ethics of service and patriotism while undergoing training po sa three program components. Ang lahat po ng freshman ay uh, kumukuha po at naka-enrolled po dito sa NSTP kung saan ang common uh, module po Ito ay... Ito replacement sa ROTC. Ah, hindi po. Wala nang ROTC ngayon. Ito na yon. Ma'am, hindi po. Ang ROTC po kasama po dun sa components po ng yeah, NSTP. But you may not choose to join the ROTC. Yes, ma'am. You may choose to do others. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, either CDPL po or LPS. Uh, agriculture is, uh, is uh, what do you call this, is uh, one of the choices. Yes, ma'am. Parang ganun. Yes, ma'am. Diba? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, yun lang ang tingin mo na we can do. The one of the choices na gagawin mo under the National Service Training Program yes, is to engage in agriculture. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Kasama po dun sa topics. Ano-ano yung mga kasama? Uh, kasama po dun sa topics ay yung Hindi pong... topics, yung choices. Di ba choices uh, to? Choices either po dun, uh, either po CWTS, yung Civic Welfare Training Service, or ano kaya yun? po yung Literacy Training Service. Ano yun? Uh, na kung saan po uh, both uh, component, nandun po yung uh, drug education, preparedness, uh, environmental protection na topic. Na, Nakapaloob po dun yung mga uh, environmental, care for the environment, oh, protection. Ano choices? Uh, yun lamang po. And then, uh, ROTC po yung military component. Can you give me the choices? Maybe we can do a revision on that. Sige, ma'am, we'll provide po yung, yung um, ito pong uh, draft module. Uh -huh. Ngayon po, uh, para po sa iba pa pong initiatives po ng CHED in support po dito sa pinag-uusapang proposed measures, andito po yung aking colleague, si Ms. Sheila, to share po yung initiative po ng CHED. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. So we at the Commission on Higher Education recognizes urban agriculture as an important food pr productivity endeavor. And in fact, uh, CHED already incorporated um, urban agriculture in the agriculture curriculum. Po. So moreover, HEIs have established urban garden, garden models in their campuses and now at various levels of success depending on the financial resources of the school and the creativity of commitment of the project in Ibig charge. Sabihin requirements sa lahat ng SUCs to do a garden? Yes, madam. So, Ayun, so parang gulay yan sa paaralan We are din. encouraging them, madam. Are you encouraging or are you requiring? Uh, for now po, uh, encouraging po. Baka pwede nating mm -hmm. ilalay na kasali sila. Total, ini-encourage na nila eh. Diba? Uh -huh. Oo. Kasi lahat naman kayo may College of Agriculture. Eh. So, mm -hmm. you can easily do it. Diba? Uh -huh, po, madam. Okay. So, um, 
not only in the SOOCs and LOOCs, but also for private HEIs po, higher education institutions. And okay. um, why, why we highly endorse this bill? It is our prayer that there will be systematic and national efforts plus funding of the initiatives of LGUs, secondary no, and we'll, tertiary we'll, schools. We'll uh, systematize yung LGUs. We're, we're going to require them to allocate a certain amount of their funds for agriculture. Okay, ma'am. Kasi lalaki na yung ira nila eh, by 2021. Yes, ma'am. Nanalo Thank sila you. sa Supreme Court. Mas malaki ang budget nila. And uh, siguro tama na rin yun that we give a certain responsibility to LGUs kasi liliit yung national budget. <laughs> kasi siyempre pag lumaki yung ira ng LGUs, kukunin yun sa national budget. So we should transfer some responsibility to the LGUs. And I just have one more. Um, during CHED uh, anniversaries, Madam, we, we usually conduct a SOOCs fair, wherein um, the products of those state universities and colleges, um, especially the agriculture, uh, the HEI's offering agriculture program, uh, showcase or um, sell their products. Po. So it's one effective way of um, um, embracing agricultural or urban agriculture in higher education institutions. Thank you, Madam. So we're adjoining. So after this, so I guess we have heard everybody. So uh, any suggestion or or what you want to uh, position paper or any suggestion you just submit to us in writing uh, yes you have uh, another question madam chair this is just an input for clarification because uh, as the discussion rolls a while ago there are uh, what they call uh, terms that were mentioned like hydroponics aquaponics that uh, form part of the consideration, especially in urban planning. Uh, we just wanted to impress of the so many technical definitions, yung mag mabilis nyo para alam nyo kung mga option. When we say hydroponics, Madam Chair, of course the Chair knows it, ay ito yung almost walang soil na mga tinat. Kanya nga hydro siya. So the soil is not a big factor there. You will be using technology in the absence of soil. Very, uh, si Madam Chair, very expensive. You, you might be saying why we do not consider it because it's expensive, but uh, ang consideration don walang soil that makes it very expensive. The other one is aquaponics. When you say aquaponics, uh, it's actually nurturing or what they call doing agri ag agriculture in the presence of other habitats like may circulating tank ka na merong mga uh, isda na, na yung umiikot ng tubig pumupunta rin sa circulating. So aqua and ponics, both. Yung halaman at saka yung isda natin or any other component. Yes, ma'am, but uh, again, medyo challenging pa rin po siya kasi medyo... And, and, and I fully agree with the chair, ang mas pinakamadali is vertical farming o kaya yung patted eh. Kasi kung magkukuha ka lang ng lupa, yung kinompose na mga material, ilalagay mo lang doon, ay mag-grow na. The other one, you may wish to consider also, but again, there are challenges, will be the greenhouse. So a greenhouse is anything that you have a controlled environment. Alimbawa, hindi mas, that is right, ma'am. May mga excessive sunlight na kinokontrol. That is right, ma'am. Yeah. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Meron po. And, and be, what? Mm. Madam Chair, what the DA wants to impress here is that we fully concur to you that even without the soil na sinasabi natin limitation, we could do it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam. Okay. So, uh, all your position paper, your suggestions, please put it into writing because we are adjourning this hearing and we will uh, do the final bill. So it's important that we get all your opinions, your position paper, your suggestions, so we can do a, 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 a comprehensive bill on this because we intend to pass this in the, 
in Congress. So we are suspending, uh, we are adjourning this hearing, and uh, thank you very much for coming. May food ha, wag mo na kayo umalis. Na late lang. Kala ko dala ko na yun. Baka hindi. Pahingi ako ka. Ano nakita